Welcome to our second panel today, where we want to talk about peer-to-peer -peer lending in challenging times and how COVID-19 changed the business of some platforms. And again, like the last panel, if you have any questions about the content or the uh, panelists, and please write it into the chat and we will collect them for the last minute so we have enough time for all your questions. Hopefully, it depends a little bit on how much you are talking. And for this topic, we have some experts in that panel. And uh, guys, can you please introduce yourself? So, uh, David, then. Sure, I'm, I'm David Bradley Ward. I'm CEO of AbleRate. We're a um, UK peer to peer lender. Um, been around since 2014, um, mainly do asset backed transactions. Um, we also um, created a, a secondary market that. Um, it was based on a kind of bond bar, bond market situation um, and of the 60 million that we've originated we've traded around about 48 on that market and since then we've created a new technology a company called asmx which is um, a blockchain based secondary market and we rolled that out in october uh, and that's traded just over a million two in the first uh, first few weeks of it so um so yeah so it's, it's looking good Okay, a blockchain-based secondary market sounds interesting. Maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit more about this later. And sure. but we now go to Evaldas. Uh, hello, um, my name is Evaldas Grimekis. I am uh, chair of uh, the board of uh, Neo Finance. Uh, Neo Finance is the platform uh, of classic P two P consumer lending. We are based in Lithuania, so all the borrowers. Uh, Lithuanian residents, but uh, uh, investors can be uh, from uh, every EU country, and also not, not even EU, but EEA country, so including Switzerland, Nor Norway, and so on. Uh, and we have been operating since 2015, so we are already five uh, years in the P2P consumer lending uh, market. And uh, uh, we are not very typical platform as we also um, we have a license of electronic money institution. So we are at the bundle of P2P consumer lending platform and electronic money institution. And um, uh, at the moment, the uh, last hour uh, numbers are uh, that we um, issue about 2 million euros of uh, consumer loans in, in the Lithuanian market. Uh, so, and in total, uh, we already have issued about uh, 65 million uh, euros of, of loans. So we have, of course, a secondary market for, for investors to trade uh, investments and um, we also are uh, offering some um, uh, uh, some uh, products which reduces mitigates the risk uh, for for investors. Okay, thank you. So let's start. Um, this Christmas time around the corner. What do you think? Our uh, center would evaluate your company performance in twenty twenty. Maybe we can start with uh, able rate, David. Uh, you know what? I mean, uh, we, we um, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where I think if anybody involved in financial services, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan. And uh, one of the things I was saying in various different pitches before the, this pandemic came along was that if, if we know anything in financial services, at some point, sometime, winter is coming. Uh, now, I can't say that we predicted the pandemic, but we built our business model around the fact that there are cycles. So a lot of our revenue is based on long tail, um, long tail business, which is the spread over what we will charge a borrower and what we will pay to a lender. So over that period of time, we've we've actually had the most profitable year that we've had since we started. And we've been profitable for the last three years, but to this year is the most profitable. Um, but I think that is a function of the fact of the business model that we built um, um, over the years and the loan book that we built over the years. So, so I think um, I think we've done okay. I think we've uh, I think we've done all right. I mean, I, there are 
some areas that perhaps we could have seen coming. We've had we've got quite a few loans out to the entertainment industry, which of course has been a problem um, to say the least. Um, and perhaps we were, uh, you know, we, we 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 probably could have anticipated maybe not a pandemic, but we certainly could have anticipated that there might be issues in a cycle for those kind of businesses. But overall, I think we've had a we've had a very good year. Yeah, and I saw your numbers um, in front of this panel, and you has also have also a growing loan portfolio 2020 despite the crisis, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're not uh, we're often compared with those businesses that say that you know we've done 300 million in loans and all this sort of stuff, um, but a lot of that is cumulative short term stuff. Ours is averaged at uh, sort of 36 months as an average loan. We've done 60 million in around about 60 million in origination. 48 million of it has traded on our secondary market. Um, and so, uh, and, you know, we managed to to do re decent revenues out of that. I think for for this, for the end of the, well, for the last sort of 12 months, we've really been concentrating on the new technology that we're creating for the secondary market and how that can lift our origination and, uh, um, and can help us collaborate with other platforms, which is the next, the next phase essentially for, our our scaling plans but uh yeah i mean it's a it's it's been tough for everybody i think uh, we've just um we've we we just knew something would come along at some stage um and and, and planned uh and a planned for something along those lines in the structure of the way our business model is yeah so we heard in the last panel um because of the default rates that the sh these short-term loans are not that affected um like the long-term loans now you said you have loans with terms from uh, 60, 36 months, something like this. Um, what do you think um, about the default rate, rates, which will probably come in the next years because of this uh, COVID stuff? I think it, it, well, it all comes down to what, what type of loans you're doing. I think you're, if you're in the, um, if you're in the sort of 50 to 200,000 pound unsecured marketplace, I'm, I'm sure you're going to need some sort of medication to help you sleep at night. Um, we have, we are essentially an asset back platform. So a lot of the loans, well, most, the vast majority of the loans that we do will have some sort of tangible asset that we, that we have also the kind of businesses that we deal with. We're not, we're not, um, like I say, we're not a big volume platform on the basis that we will do 10,000 loans. We, we, you know, we have 60 loans in our loan book at present. So we know our borrowers very, very, very well. Um, we do multiple loans with those borrowers. We have cross collateralization, various different guarantees, personal guarantees, that sort of stuff. So they're very much invested in making sure that um, that those loans are performing um, as much as we are um, aligned with our lenders as far as the spread is concerned. Because mm -hmm. if they don't pay, we don't get, we don't earn. So, so we have a very symbiotic relationship with borrowers and lenders. Okay, thanks for it. Um, maybe Roxana, can you hear us now? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, cool. Can you please uh, introduce yourself and um, maybe you can tell us a little bit uh, what is going on in your company in 2020? Yeah. Sure. Uh, so our platform is a Blend Network. Blend Network is a peer-to-peer -peer property lending platform. We are based in the UK. We, we are based in London uh, and we lend all across the UK. So um, we focus on the property uh, side. So we essentially provide development finance and bridging loans to small and medium property developers in the UK. So our investors can invest from 1,000 pounds and the return is eight to 12%. Uh, and the collateral is a uh, first charge on uh, the property uh, based in the UK. So our borrowers are small and medium property developers, uh, mostly across the regions so places like Birmingham, you know, Nottingham, uh, and so far, um, that are borrowing between uh, 150,000 pounds to 3 million uh, for a GDV up to uh, about 5 million. Um, so we have had a very, very strong year. Our lending this year is up by 104% compared to 2019. Um, and we, I mean, we uh, generally just had a very, very strong year, both on the lender and on the borrower side. I guess on the lender side, we really have seen a lot more um, uh, retail investors, but also family offices. And um, I think, you know, what happened in the equity markets uh, in the Q1 and Q2 
Uh, obviously, you know, equity markets lost a third of their value between um, mid-February and mid-March. We saw a, a big increase in, in lending appetite, uh, just, I guess, as a, diversify, a diversification of portfolio from many, um, you know, retail investors, family offices. But also, we saw a lot of family offices uh, using peer-to-peer -peer as a peer-to-peer -peer platform as an origination vehicle because people, so they wanted to do private debt but a lot of these uh, family offices, um, especially the smaller ones, they would not have their own origination vehicle. So using peer-to-peer -peer platform as an origination vehicle for private debt. And uh, and then on the borrowing side, we have seen a lot more loan requests this year because obviously many you know mainstream lenders, banks, they pulled out. And so uh, many property developers, they were left out in the cold by their uh, uh, lenders. So we've seen a lot more deals. We have done our, our largest deals uh, over the summer. So uh, June, July, August uh, were record months for us. Um, and yes, lending is up by 104% this year. Okay, thank you for that. And about us, what would send us uh, to Neo Finance? Uh, uh, so, um, in 2020, of course, we have uh, bigger plans in terms of loans amount uh, issued per year. So, but uh, now it seems uh, it's still uh, two weeks uh, left. Uh, so, we see that we will uh, overcome uh, the last year result. So. Uh, we'll issue more loans uh, than in 2019. So in, in this COVID times, it's a quite good result, uh, despite that we, of course, the initial plan was, uh, was uh, to issue about 20% uh, of loans more throughout our platform. Uh, in terms of revenue, um, because our revenue uh, are deferred in uh, all period of, uh, in, in all maturity of loan so in terms of revenue of course our revenue will increase uh, quite uh, quite much comparing to 2019 um, and it's very interesting in uh, Lithuanian consumer loans um, in business uh, after uh, first quarantine um, we didn't have more defaults uh, and uh, there are of course many reasons behind it uh, why uh, it, the government help which uh, uh, allowed by a law for the uh, consumer to postpone uh, payment of uh, credit part uh, uh, to six uh, months a half year uh, also the government aid for for people um, they, they give some uh, money and uh, yeah we uh, at first we uh, were a little bit afraid uh, what will happen uh, in, in in March especially uh, because yeah it was big uncertainty uh, what will happen next um, but uh, it was still strange that we didn't uh, um, uh, didn't see any um, increase in default rates. But looking to the future, it's still the question and uh, we do not know. But uh, our investors do not predict uh, that default uh, will increase in the uh, foreseeable future because uh, the interest rate in our platform, interest rates uh, are not increasing at the moment. It means that investors expect uh, that default rates will not increase uh, also in this uh, quarantine period till let's say till March or we don't know exactly. Uh, so um, this uh, COVID time at the moment it didn't uh, affect uh, the returns for our investors and we are very happy uh, of, of that situation. Okay, thank you for that. So, say to wrap it up, it's uh, a bit like um, in the last panel. So, um, the volumes are going up, and um, but it's a lot of uncertainty when we look to the next year. 
Um, with April Rate and Blend, we have now two platforms in this panel, which are a bit out of scope for most investors I know from, from Germany. Uh, I asked questions before in the other panel, but maybe you can give us a short wrap up what happened um, when the pandemic kicked in earlier this year in Great Britain, especially on your platform. So uh, what have you done and um, yeah, what happened there? Maybe we can start with uh, David. Uh, well, uh, as, uh, as has just been said in March, initially, um, it, it was, uh, <laughs> it, it was a, um, a moment, shall we say, to, to have a look at the book and think, I mean, put it this way, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to be managing a 30 million pound loan book when suddenly there's a global pandemic. It wasn't the ideal scenario. So, um, we, we just looked at the book as it was and, uh, we realized that there was going to be a, a period of time where really nobody knew what was going on, um, including our our chancellor by the looks of it. Um, and, and uh, you know, we when they brought in all the, re the recovery money, the C, uh, what, what they call over here, the C bills and the bounce back loans and all that sort of stuff, there was a bit of euphoria in that that, that we, um, we would start seeing some money come into the economy. The problem being is that it was always going to be relied on for the banks to do it. And we saw in 2007, eight, nine, um, that you can't really rely on the banks um, in those kind of situations. So we realized that there was probably going to be a bit, be a problem in the short term. So we started speaking to our, our borrowers. Um, there were those, some of them who just said, listen, we're perfectly fine. We're well capitalized. We don't have to worry about things, you know, don't worry. And there were others who, um, were in those industries that were essentially uh, shut down the entertainment side of it. We've got a few event businesses, for example. Um, we probably have, uh, or we have, we've got probably three, two or three million out to uh, pub businesses, to 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 those kind of businesses. So, you know, we had to we had to look at those um, businesses as well. But mainly, what we did was we we either reduced to half payment. And then capitalize the interest at the end of the term, um, but it was te it tended to be bespoke to each individual one. Um, that there isn't any that have that have fallen over um, due to COVID as yet. Um, depending on how long these this situation lasts, as far as event businesses and and the entertainment industry goes, um, we, we, we remains to be seen. But a lot of those loans are 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 even now are are on track, um, and there are some that, of course, aren't because there is zero revenue coming into those businesses. So, uh, um, but but on the whole, the book performed as we would expect it to perform when you look at your risk metrics in a in a in a you know in a situation like this. We we don't have. Uh, um, any any defaults beyond where we would expect our defaults to be in a book that is is made up of what it is. So as much as it was a little bit scary right at the very beginning, um, we you know we concentrated on working with the borrowers, keeping our lenders informed as much as we possibly could through weekly videos, through updates, through emails, through um, through. Um, uh, you know, admin notes and addendums to 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 uh, loan contracts, uh, just so that everybody knew what was going on. And I think that was that was what we needed to do at the time was was just keep everybody informed on a transparent basis. And if we do that, then then everybody would be uh, would calm down a bit and 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 see that it's it's a very bad scenario, but it isn't the worst case scenario. Um. So so yeah. So that that's that's essentially how we 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 did it and it's an it's an ongoing process as now i mean it's it's an ongoing process for look for looking at origination and changing your changing the credit profile on origination but it also um taught us that we were going right down the right direction by creating further liquidity tools in our new secondary market because some platforms have gone um uh, because of the fact that they couldn't offer liquidity uh, other platforms have suffered on the business of being able to give people their money back in any sort of timely fashion because of the way that their liquidity situation was set up. So we think we're going right down the right path and, uh, um, you know, we, we didn't get everything right. Um, but we think we, you know, we, we held our own and we're still here. 
which I think is the uh, which is sign, yeah. proof of the pudding, really, isn't it? Yeah. So what about your investors? Did they try to leave the platform? Um, you know what? It was interesting. Um, our entire marketplace, as, as I've said, is, was a, is, is based on a bond market. So it's a secondary market. We have a lot of liquidity in it. We've uh, up to 80 percent of our book has traded between lenders at some point. So uh, as everybody was working from home, um, I happened to be in the office and taking some of the phone calls for the security check if there was going to be a large uh, withdrawal, for example, uh, we do some various different security checks at, at various different points that are flagged up by the system. But I, I happen to be speaking to a larger investor who's been with us for four years and has never made a withdrawal. He's always reinvested his money and he was re withdrawing a large amount of cash. And I said, you know, I don't I, I understand the particular situation, but what you're withdrawing for. And he said, David, you're the only place we can get any liquidity. Um, there were some platforms where this guy had hundreds of thousands of pounds and was being allowed to withdraw five pounds a day. And so and so th that is that is I think over the period we will have uh, will have returned through this through the secondary market somewhere in the region of six to seven million. Um, uh, and that's come back. So 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 I'm not saying it's all come back with new money's come in. But, but you know what I mean? We've we've that that money went out because there was a bit of a panic on um but we're starting to see those inflows come back and we've just had our best quarter since 2018 so so you know we were very pleased it was a very proud moment for us to be able to keep those outflows going it may sound it may sound something you're not very proud of um but to keep those outflows going to keep the liquidity there is what we've been banging on about for years so we were very pleased to be able to do that when other platforms weren't Okay, sounds sounds really stable. Uh, your story from from the beginning. Um, so Roxana is back. Uh, maybe Roxana, can can you tell us a little bit um, what happened in, in the beginning of um, of the crisis? What you have done? What for measures have you done, and so on? Yes, I mean, obviously, uh, as everyone, uh, as I'm sure for everyone, at the beginning, it was a, a bit scary because of the uncertainty, because really the story was, you know, we don't know um, how long is this going to last and we don't know what's going on. So the uncertainty was the worst. And obviously, uh, when there was a full lockdown, you know, we focus on property. So even, uh, you know, building sites were were, were shut down so people could not builders could not uh, go to work and also it was very difficult to get materials so a lot of projects you know were getting delayed simply because even after they opened the um the the lockdown and builders could go to work there was a big delay in getting materials um but you know for us uh, really we managed pretty well through this crisis because one of the things for us is that when we lend uh, from the offset, we tend to give a lot longer lending facilities. So, for example, if someone comes to us and they say they want a 12-month loan, which is a nine-month to build or to redevelop and then three months to sell or to refinance it, uh, we don't give them 12 months. We give them from the beginning 18 months, and then um, they, don't have, they, do, they don't have an early repayment fee. So we, we like this uh, model because we know that in property, always, always things go late. There's always something that go is going to happen. So we tend to give them a longer lending facility. And uh, for us, it's good because, you know, we, we, we don't want to get into the problems of putting someone in default. And for them, it's good because they don't get the pressure of having to, say, you know, to rush to sell or to refinance. And then if they pay us early, they uh, don't have to pay early repayment fees. So everyone is happy. So this, we have always done this, even before the uh, pandemic. And uh, this played really well during this time. Um, I mean, we really didn't have much delays. Uh, we did have a couple of delays loans, but uh, it was the matter of the projects were finished, were completely finished, even they were tenanted. But um, the refinancing with the you know with the bank, uh, get, um, refinancing into a long-term lending facility was taking a lot longer uh, than uh, in usual times. So we did have a couple of late um, repayments, but. Uh, overall, we managed the book very, you know, pretty well. We we didn't have any defaults. We don't have any defaults. We don't have any major, you know, uh, problems. And to be honest, as of now that we speak, all of the late repayments have already been repaid. So we don't have any late repayment as of as of today. Um, and I think one of the key, you know, things is that because it was such a difficult year for everyone. To be honest, the fact that um, uh, you manage to do well, and even if you have a, a couple of late repayments, that is a pretty strong message. So I think being having 
being able to navigate through this year and being able to show that you have navigated, it sends a very strong message uh, because it has been such a difficult year for everyone. So, um, so those who have been able to survive those platforms, who have been able to survive and to do well, I think they are, you know, in a very strong position compared to the beginning of the year. And I think also before the crisis, many people said that, you know, peer-to-peer -peer lending has not yet gone through a full cycle. It has not yet, yet seen its first crisis. But I think that this year really was a very good opportunity um, for peer-to-peer -to, -peer to show that, you know, we have gone through a crisis and, and essentially to be able to show its worth uh, during a very difficult year. Um, and I think this is something that we have been very vocal about in terms of uh, for the governments, you know, they have seen that peer-to-peer -peer actually is a very powerful tool that they can use to deploy funds when they need it to the sectors that they need it. In the UK, we have a very big, uh, you know, housing crisis. And one of the main reasons is that small property developers, they cannot get development finance. They cannot get um, money to build houses. So I think this year's governments have seen that peer-to-peer uh, -peer platforms, alternative lenders can be a very strong ally uh, in terms of deploying funds. Uh, so, so you know, uh, as opposed to 2008, 2009, when the financial system was uh, kind of the problem, this time around it has been the opposite. It has been a part of the solution. Yeah. Thank you, Roxana. Um, so let's let's come to Neo Finance. Um, Neo Finance is based in Lithuania and is strongly regulated by the Lithuanian Central Bank, as far as I know. Um, uh, and I'm also invested on, on Neo Finance, and I had a feeling there wasn't that much problem on the platform. Is it, is it right in in March and April? Uh, yes. Uh... Actually, our government uh, announced uh, the quarantine uh, on uh, 15th of March. So, yeah, everybody was everybody, everybody was very scary what will happen uh, next. Uh, and we, we've made some steps. Uh, for example, uh, we cut it, uh, the loan amounts for credit scores uh, by... 20, 50 percent, because we uh, didn't want that people uh, uh, to, uh, to, to to get uh, bigger loans uh, because of uncertainty at that time. And also uh, we made some step increasing the uh, lower limit of interest rate. So it means we, we said to the market, to the investors that there is uh, uncertainty, uncertainty of time, and please uh, look, uh, think about increasing the interest rate a little bit. So we we intervene uh, the free market a little bit uh, because yeah, it was also scary for us, not only for investors, uh, and also uh, very 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 fast. Our government uh, announced uh, the new law, uh, which. Uh, uh, said uh, that everybody uh, who has consumer loans uh, and uh, their income has dropped more than 30 percent um, can um, apply uh, to to the platform or to any other creditor to um, uh, to be able to postpone the payment of credit part up to six uh, months and to pay only interest uh, to, to the investors. Um, we thought that maybe it would be quite a big number of uh, such uh, borrowers who will decide to apply. Uh, but uh, in in few uh, in the next few months, uh, we, we saw that only 1% of our customers uh, has applied uh, for this uh, postponed payments, so that was not big number. Uh, and actually, after uh, one month, approximately, uh, we decided uh, to uh, 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 to call back our decisions, and uh, we increased the loan volumes. Uh, we decreased the lower limit of interest rate. 
And the, because uh, we, in the next uh, month, we, we've seen that it's actually uh, no impact uh, and inflows uh, are going quite good and the default rates are not increasing. Uh, but of course, the first two weeks uh, till uh, approximately um, until first of April, uh, we, we we saw that uh, many of investors decided to uh, uh, let's say to cash out uh, and maybe to to hold their investments. Uh, of course, and also we saw that uh, borrowers also stopped. Uh, let's say, uh, stopped um, uh, from uh, borrowing and they decided b because, uh, yeah, they were not confident about the future and what is going uh, on. Uh, so uh, the demand for the loans also has dropped. Uh, but actually it lasted about one month and after this one month we, we've got to the same situation what was, uh, let's say, before uh, COVID. And as I mentioned before, default rates actually are the same uh, as it was uh, before COVID situation. Okay, thank you for that. Maybe we can we can stay with you because um, today you uh, bring a small present with you. And this is the presentation about uh, um, yeah what you have done in the crisis. And I think there are also information about your new um, credit score, it's A+, plus, and why you implemented this. So uh, I would like to ask you if we can start your presentation now, um, that the audience can better know what, what you are talking about. I think it's, it's a good one. Okay, I'll try to... Yeah, you can share your screen. Yeah, I'll... I'm trying to share my screen now. Do you see it? Yes, I can see it. Okay, so maybe I'll show a small presentation uh, about Neo Finance, uh, a little bit about our business uh, model. So as uh, I said, we are classic P2P consumer lending uh, platform. Uh, it means that investors uh, uh, lend uh, the money uh, straight to the borrowers uh, and um, of course investor, in, investors uh, can trade in a secondary platform uh, and um, our strategy is to compete uh, more with prime customers so uh, our strategy is to compete more with traditional banks uh, not with uh, subprime, let's say, subprime lenders. Um, and we are very focused on uh, long-term uh, business. Uh, so we have invested heavily in IT platform from the very beginning. Actually, uh, our company was established in uh, January 2014, uh, but we started our operations only in December 2014. Uh, 15, so it uh, took almost two years for us uh, to get all the licenses. As Lars mentioned, Lithuania is uh, one of uh, the few countries in Europe which are regulated. So P2P consumer lending platform operations are regulated in uh, Lithuania. So we need to get the certain uh, license to, to do that business. Uh, also, uh, we decided that we need to get electronic money institution license uh, for the customers uh, to hold uh, money into their uh, accounts, not to transfer money in to, to our company accounts. So we wanted uh, from the beginning to protect uh, the funds of investors uh, from that of our company money. Uh, so, uh, also, also, we do not uh, take any upfront uh, uh, fees uh, from the borrowers. Uh, it means that uh, our income are deferred um, to the future periods. For example, if uh, the loan is issued for 
seven years term, it means that we'll collect our revenue only in uh, seven uh, years and only in the case uh, when borrower repay uh, that uh, loan. It means we are sitting in uh, one boat with investors and uh, uh, we get our commission fee only when uh, our investors uh, get uh, the monthly installment from the borrowers. So, uh, uh, we, we have electronic money institution license, and of course, we are heavily regulated uh, by the Lithuanian Central Bank, uh, who is uh, uh, the um, uh, supervisor of, uh, of financial uh, market in Lithuania. Uh, so, the investors uh, always know that uh, we operate uh, having enough uh, capital for operations because the minimum capital by electronic uh, money institution law is 350,000 uh, euros. And if we fall below that number, we need to increase our capital. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, we would, would do that when it's uh, needed. Um, also, it's also very important that we are trying to be a very transparent company and um, uh, f actually from the very beginning we are publishing our reports um, uh, to the public, to the investors, to any stakeholders. Uh, everybody can check our financial accounts and of course these financial accounts are audited uh, uh, and um, yeah our investors in that case can uh, believe that uh, our financial information is reflected accurately. Uh, also, uh, two years ago, uh, we were we decided to go public uh, to trade our shares um, because in Lithuania we have a Nasdaq uh, first and north uh, uh, so-called market for uh, let's say for small uh, companies, for medium and small companies which want uh, to uh, be uh, on the stock uh, market. Uh, so NASDAQ has the special um, special market in, in Lithuania, so-called first, first north. So uh, we are listed in that stock market, so everybody can track our share price also Everybody can, can buy our shares in, in, in NASDAQ first uh, North stock market. Um, also, I, I also would like to mention that uh, we are regulated uh, uh, by Lithuanian Central Bank uh, in terms of electronic money institution. Also, we are regulated uh, like P2P consumer lending uh, platform as well as um, consumer credit provider because for liquidity reasons we also uh, issue the loans uh, so we act like uh, the uh, let's say as the um, how it's called a market um, uh, so for example uh, we, we invest uh, to, to close uh, the deals, uh, not to, uh, to to be on the market for, for too long uh, time. So if our portfolio, for example, at the moment is 34 uh, million euros, uh, so our, our part is about 2.6 uh, million euros. Uh, out of uh, 34 million euros. So, so we have our small, our own uh, portfolio on our books. Uh, so uh, we, we invest, uh, let's say, together with investor. Uh, and also we have, of course, business continuity plan, which is required uh, by the law in Lithuania. And uh, we need to, let's say, to show all steps and to um, uh, to, to make all the decisions, uh, what will happen if something goes wrong? Uh, for example, 
uh, we do stress tests. Uh, it means if economic uh, downturn uh, is happening, uh, how the platform uh, financial uh, situation will withhold uh, the economic crisis, for example. Uh, this is also required, uh, yeah, and we of we need to update uh, these plans every every year. Um, and actually, doing all these uh, steps, uh, we strive mm -hmm. uh, we strive to be uh, the so called we we call it uh, most safest mm -hmm. uh, platform in continental uh, Europe. Uh, yeah, because we have very good yeah. foundation for that, uh, all the licenses needed and uh, all other stuff we already have done. Uh, and also I want to mention, for example, that all investors' money, for example, being us as electronic money institution, are stored in Lithuanian Central Bank. Uh, that's uh, completely not common for other platforms. And in our case, investors uh, know that when transferring uh, the funds to invest uh, uh, to the loans uh, from Neo Finance, uh, they transfer the money not to us, but to their account opened at Neo Finance. And that funds uh, they transfer, uh, they actually are stored uh, at Lithuanian central bank accounts. So, if, for example, we 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 face some bank run or, or similar situation, uh, it's it's no threat to to the investors' uh, funds. Uh, yeah, that was uh, the slide uh, I, I've, I've told. And just uh, for, for the audience, I can tell um, that really it's very secure thing, and especially in that turbulent times. And if you uh, want to check if your uh, money are uh, stored, uh, parked, or stored uh, at the platform, uh, very secure, it's very easy way how to check that. If you are doing the transfer uh, to the platform to your own account, that means your money are completely, uh, let's say, safe uh, because uh, this money belongs uh, to you and uh, by the electronic uh, money uh, law, uh, platform cannot uh, touch that money. Uh, never, and this is controlled by supervision authority. Uh, regarding the credit risk, uh, of course, it's very important part. Uh, as you say, the first uh, goal of investor is not to earn uh, returns, but the first uh, goal for investor uh, should be to protect the principal part they have transferred to the platform. But the next uh, goal for investors uh, are always to earn some returns. Uh, so now we are talking about the credit risk of uh, the platform, the, because the platform, you know, assess the risk uh, itself using different kind of algorithms and methods how to assess the credit risk. In our case, we switched uh, to AI-based uh, credit scoring uh, in, in, uh, in um, October last year. So uh, more than one year, we're already using AI-based AI uh, credit risk algorithm. And we are happy with the results. And um, um, yeah, for example, uh, talking talking about the returns, uh, it's um, uh, at the moment it's possible to to dream about uh, eight from eight to twelve uh, percent of annual returns uh, in in Lithuania when in investing. Um, when lending to the uh, Lithuanian uh, borrowers, consumer loans, consumer loans. Um, but uh, we as a platform also uh, 
are offering two features how to uh, reduce the risk, um, but of course the returns uh, goes goes down. But actually, you exchange in first case you using our provision for fund investor exchange paying some um, fee. Uh, they can um, uh, exchange the fee with a risk. We take a risk for the fee of uh, of the credit. So in that case, uh, let's say the returns of uh, of uh, investment uh, annual return in investment uh, could be around from from three to eight percent. Also, we are offering buyback service. It means that uh, investors, uh, when we loan defaults, uh, have a chance. It's, not obligation, but you can choose always, do you want to sell uh, the default loan to us, or you can wait uh, while the uh, loan uh, that, that will be uh, collected. Uh, so, uh, so there is an option in our case, so we buy, buy our defaulted loans from investors if uh, they uh, demanded and the uh, let's see last our product regarding um, uh, scoring uh, so uh, now we are using AI based algorithm and we decided as our strategy is to go uh, go into prime uh, consumer loans market and to compete with high street uh, banks so we we offer it for investors so called a plus credit credit score and uh, so we are offering that credit score uh, about uh, a year at the moment and yeah it's um, we are very happy with the results uh, that actually uh, after one year we have no defaults at all uh, for that credit score a plus uh, but of course, uh, because uh, the investors uh, already have confidence that actually the credit risk is uh, so low, uh, so the 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 interest rate, uh, let's say, uh, also also have have dropped uh, because of uh, uh, the low risk when investing into this uh, credit score. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's uh, all I wanted to show. And uh, thank you very much for for your attention. Yeah, thank you also, Evaldas. Um, do you have um, maybe David or Alexander? Do we have some questions about this presentation as a platform from Great Britain or not? No, I mean, I was really interested to hear more about the European market because we obviously we are in the UK, um, but uh, it looks like really the compliance side is, is quite in line with what is happening in the UK also. And a lot more, you know, here we, we are seeing a lot more um, tightening of the regulation because obviously we have a lot more increasingly retail lenders and they need higher protection. Um, so yes, it seems to be aligned also what's happening in, in Europe. Yeah. How, how is it in Great Britain with the payments? Um, we see on Neo Finance that we have segregated accounts with our own, so our own IBANs. How is it handled in, in Great Britain? Yes, exactly. It's similar. It's similar. So we have a, our client account is a segregated account. In our case, uh, it's a Barclays account segregated. Uh, yes, and then obviously we have an e-wallet uh, where um, you know the lenders would deposit their money on their e-wallet and lend from their e-wallet. So yes, it is similar exactly. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, thanks for that. Um, do you have some questions under each other? Maybe uh, about some some platform stuff. No, I mean I would just be interested what uh, you know what the panel thinks about. Uh, there is an increasing discussion about people saying you know we'll see an increasing institutional lenders or some you know they they think that we'll see more retail lenders. I, I'm interested just to to hear from the panel. Um, how do they feel this, uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer going more towards institutional lenders or more toward uh, retail lenders? Okay, well, yes. yeah, um, I, I forgot to mention because, uh, you know, P2P um, uh, consumer lending um, 
uh, has been uh, regulated from uh, 2016 in Lithuania. Uh, so uh, more than four years already passed. And uh, we had initial law in Lithuania saying that institutional investors cannot invest into consumer loans through the platforms. And not only institutional investors, uh, the law also uh, was saying that any legal entity uh, cannot be an investor into consumer loan platforms. And now our uh, government has changed. And the one of the first, um, let's say, laws uh, amendments um, came uh, regarding this regulation, which now uh, already uh, lets to invest institutional investors and any legal entity can be investor into consumer loans in Lithuania. So uh, it may happen uh, that we'll have um, institutional and other type of investors which will decide uh, to invest into consumer loans through the platforms. And uh, it may help us uh, to um, seek our goals to, to compete with high street banks regarding the consumer loans, yeah, because the um, uh, money will flow from these uh, legal, legal entities and institutional in investors. So it's very good for uh, borrowers, uh, yeah, because now they will have even more, uh, even more, uh, let's say, uh, let's uh, possibilities to get the loans uh, at the more friend friendly interest uh, rates. Uh, because uh, in uh, in Lithuania, uh, the interest rates in high street banks is not very similar like in old Western Europe or in UK. Actually, the average interest uh, rate in, in high street banks for consumer loans are um, about 11%. Uh, okay. so for, for us, it's very good um, news from the new government. Yeah, of course. David, your opinion? Yeah, I think uh, well, it, it's a very good uh, it's a very good question because uh, we one of the problems I think with a, with running a peer to peer platform as I'm sure we all have experienced if you if you if you if you have started a peer to peer platform is you, your um, your ultimate problem is is balancing your origination with your uh, cash inflows and uh, institutions certainly in our experience. Um, have a deployment requirement. If you, if you are originating a couple of million pounds a month, you're unlikely to be able to attract an institution that's looking to deploy 10 million pounds because of the cash drag that is on, on those kind of things. So what do you do? You either scale, and to scale, you may have to change your business model to become more volume-oriented rather than, um, uh, than, a, than a specific niche model. Or you start to collaborate where, where platforms can work together. So this is one of the things that we're working with with ASMX as the as the as a secondary market. The idea is that we would be able to collaborate with platforms. So Neo Finance, Blend, and AbleRate, for example, would all be connected to the same amount of to the same liquidity platform, um, where institutions could pick a mixture of loans from Blend from from Neo Finance, from Able Rate, and from those others that we are connecting to the platform, and then it's a then it's a lot easier for us. I mean, one of the things I'm sure you guys have have heard and probably had lots of phone calls from is those people who talk about aggregation. So they say they're going to outspend us on marketing, that they are going to become the compare the market of P2P, that they're going to do no work in origination. Um, and they'd like a big fat fee for us for the pleasure of them introducing our customers to us. Um, and that model has failed so many times in our business that it, it, it is not coming back. So we prefer to say that aggregation is dead, but cooperation is the future. 
And if we can all bring together, we can't all be funding circle. The way that we say in the UK, we can't all be funding circle, but 50 of us can be. And mm -hmm. and and this is where we're heading with this new technology that we've got. For, for example, we have 7,000 customers on AbleRect. Anybody who joins uh, the uh, ASMX platform will have access to those 7,000 customers. Now, it's all blockchain-based. There is no uh, privacy issues. Another platform won't be able to see who our lenders are, and we won't be able to see who their lenders are. But we'll all be, but all those lenders will be authorized to trade on one single marketplace. And of course, people may say, "Well, what's that? How does that benefit?" Well, um, you know, uh, it's been said, and it was said on a, on an earlier. Uh, platform. If you are new to the business, if you are uh, beginning a new platform, you need product. Um, it's very much like running a dating site. If you have no ladies on the platform, the guys are not going to come. If you have no guys, the ladies are not going to come. So how do you how do you balance that? And it's a similar similar situation. So if you are if you have access to other products, um, then uh, you're able to concentrate on marketing for a while, build up your specific client base, and create your own niche in whatever product that you're doing for example we we don't get as heavily involved as roxana does in uh, development finance but my lenders are certainly interested in development finance so why wouldn't i allow them to be able to to uh to buy uh blend network loans through able rates it's just it's it's a sensible thing we you know hopefully we would all have our you know our standards are all lifted we would have a certain amount of standardization in the industry and therefore more institutional lenders family offices traders you know liquidity providers will work through that secondary market um and of course we can all get on with our with our primary markets and and um and developing money from there i think if P2P is going to be mainstream. It has to ape a lot of the mainstream products functions, and liquidity is one of those big functions. Um, and access, and it, and you know, I think I think if we all put our heads together and, and work on something like that, then certainly the, the, there's going to be more institutional access for the smaller and mid tier platforms rather than it rather than everybody being trying to get to 100 million 150 200 million a year of performance because you if unless you are in a certain niche you are not going to do that right <laughs> if you are if you want to be funding circle you've got to be in unsecured loans from 50 to 250 grand and you've got to have a massive backing of vc and if you're going up against funding circle you don't stand a chance and so so, so the collaboration, I think, is the way forward for for a lot of the um, a lot of the, uh, the the move forward to getting institutional money and to making P two P more of a general asset class that that institutional investors would invest in alongside retail investors who we who we give direct access to. Yeah, thank yes, you. I couldn't agree more. David, I've added you on LinkedIn. Uh, we'll, we'll email you after this. No, I, I agree. This is a, um, yes, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. It's about collaboration, both be, or between platforms, as you say, but also, you know, with the traditional lenders as well. We have seen with yeah. the bank referral scheme, you know, how it has, um, I mean, it hasn't been massively successful, but we, in particular, we have funded deals that have been referred to us by uh, mainstream, by traditional banks like Barclays, HSBC, coming from the bank referral scheme. So um, I, I agree that collaboration really is key uh, in, in growing this, uh, this sector. Yeah, thanks for the comments about this. Yes, Evans, you want to say? Uh, from the other side, uh, we were waiting uh, to the law uh, which allows to invest for institutional investors and legal entities uh, for four years. And now when the law is already adopted, um, w w we have some consideration uh, regarding uh, if uh, now we can attract institutional investor. Uh, we are quite small platform. Uh, our portfolio is uh, 34 million euros. So actually it means that we can attract only 
uh, one institutional uh, investor because they all require to invest uh, starting from 10 million euros. And uh, then there is a question that we um, become dependent on that uh, one institutional investor. And uh, now we start to think maybe it's better to have a uh, thousand of uh, smaller investors than to have one big investor who, if he is, uh, for example, uh, the the on, only one on the platform can start to dictate some uh, terms and conditions for the platform. So uh, it means that yeah, it's better always to have a uh, hundred and thousand of investors than to have a few uh, big uh, investors, in my opinion. So yeah, if if. If we create something like uh, some big secondary market uh, uh, when every investor can uh, enter the platform and to buy small parts of investments, in that case, it's a very good idea. Yeah, I mean, it works not just for P2P, of course. It works for balance sheet lenders. So if balance sheet lenders are looking to refi, then, you know, it gives us access as a peer-to-peer -peer network of platforms. The opportunity for our lenders to participate in refis of which we could um, could make commission. So it's it's a it is a um, and of course you're you're absolutely right. If you end up with large investors, you end up with a tail wagging the dog. Um, but if the dog's big enough, um, and that's a and that comes from collaboration, um, then you know it ends up being essentially an originator's market rather than being a lender's market which is which is where you need to get to to be able to to get the best deals and to be able to uh, to to work through the platform cool thanks guys um it's nice to see you discussing about some some interesting things mm -hmm. but we have just um around 20 minutes left so i would uh, switch to the questions from the audience because um, we have we have some and uh, I'll start with the first one. This is um, a question for David and Abel Rage. Are there any new aviation industry projects in the pipeline? I think you changed your business model. Uh, yeah, you know, we, we started off with aviation stuff and I'd never say never, but um, the problem is number one, they're dollar denominated. So you mostly dollar denominated. So you have an issue there with, with, um, with cross uh, with cross currency with FX, um, and secondly, the marketplace right now is so um, is so uh, volatile. It's it's crazy. I mean, I, you know, there may be a lot of opportunities for teardowns and and um, you know loans that are uh, parts based, um, but I'm sure there are plenty of funds out there at the moment that are doing that. So no, we 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 are we are we're not really in the aviation space at the moment but i would never i would never say never okay thank you so conrad asked which potential disadvantages disadvantages or restrictions do you see ahead for investors from the eu investing via uk based peer to peer platforms oh, that's a good question i i we we yet to we yet to know that really i mean i it may be that um that we are just not allowed to market to them um, um but how you stop that if somebody wants to come in and uh, invest across the, a uk platform i don't know maybe we'll have to exclude them I, you know i'm pretty confident that we'll have some sort of deal on services um uh, and uh and from that perspective i i don't think there'll be any particular issue but but you know I, I, we don't we we just don't know yet but i think I think there'll be some deal. Uh, the services are so massive in the UK, and we're, we're so interconnected across Europe from from a financial services perspective. I can't see even the politicians screwing it up at this stage. Okay, so there's a lot of fog ahead, I would say. Yeah. But let's see. Um, the next question goes to Blend Network. Um, according to your website, you have still zero defaults in 2020. Uh, do you expect more defaults in 2021? Um, we, I mean, we, we, so we used to, so this year we had a couple of loans that were late, as I said, uh, because uh, the, the projects were finished, but they were just getting delayed in the refinancing process, and those have now fully repaid, so we don't have any uh, late. 
to be honest, we are not expecting. Uh, I mean, we we have in our statistics page that we uh, we uh, have our loan book. Uh, if you go to network.com and then uh, statistics, we have our loan book there, and also our projections uh, for 2020. No, we we don't expect any any lateness or any default. Um, as I said from the beginning, like we, our business model is to always give a lot more time to the property developers than they need initially. It's been the, the case for us since we launched, even before the COVID, because we know that in property, uh, in property development, always something goes, uh, you know, wrong or late. Um, so really giving more time, and especially for us, the due diligence is the, the biggest part of our business is the due diligence, really, uh, especially in property because always something goes wrong in property. So if you have the right team and if you have the right borrower, they would know how to sort it out. Uh, so that's why we really focus on the track record of the property and the due diligence. Um, I, we, I mean, we if you look at our, uh, our loan book and our website, we have just lent just over 20 million so far since we launched in 20, mid-2017. So we don't have a massive loan book. For us more, it has been the focus on quality of the loans rather than quantity. So um, honestly, like from knowing the way we work for us, we are very, very strict with the due diligence that we do. And uh, that's why we have managed to really keep the defaults that uh, we do so far. And, and we don't expect, uh, from the loans that we have on the book so far, we don't expect any default okay. or any lateness. But just just a question more from my side. Uh, what is the minimum investment uh, from on your platform? You said something like one thousand euro, or did I misunderstand? One thousand pounds. One thousand pounds. So this is this is a lot compared to to the Baltic platforms because most of the uh, smaller investors they can start there with fifty euros, something like this. And yes, I mean when we launched the platform, uh, we definitely thought about you know what was what would be the minimum amount, and we decided that one thousand pounds was for us the right amount because. Um, I know obviously platforms that you can start with 20 pounds or 50 pounds, but uh, I would say it's a lot more headache, frankly, uh, you know, to, to deal with a lot more uh, smaller amount and large amount of uh, investors putting small amount of money. And also, frankly, from the compliance point of view, you know, the higher you put the entry barrier, the more you tend to have a more sophisticated, if I may use the word, kind of investors. And, and it is very important for us to, even the retail investors that we have, that they understand, you know, what peer-to-peer -peer is, they understand the risk. Um, even before it was mandatory to have the question, the test, we had it even before uh, it was requirement. So for us, it's very important to have investors that they know what they are doing and they know what they are investing. And I think when you have, you know, minimum amount of investment at 20 pounds or 50 pounds, you tend to see a lot more um, uh, investors that probably are not, you know, uh, uh, very familiar with, with what is the concept, so we just prefer to have it a bit higher. No, I think it's a good argument. Um, we saw it also in the last panel um, that the trend um, from some platforms are to, yeah, to catch some more experienced investors um, with hiring the, the minimum investment. How is it on April rate? I know the, the uh, yeah. Well, the function of the secondary market is that you know the minimum on the secondary market is ten pounds because people look to reinvest their interest. We did a similar exercise when we started as to where we set our minimum levels, and the issue is a lot of the time is diversification. So if you've got a thousand pounds, really, if you're going to be any sort of diversified, you've got to have ten loans. So uh, I know it works for for certain platforms, but but over a period of time, just from empirical uh, evidence that we've had across ours, is we just set it as a minimum. But of course, it does bring into account. You know, you can invest a pound basically in our in our loans, but it does bring extra um, uh, responsibility to monitor vulnerability, vulnerable customers, uh, unsuitable customers, that sort of stuff. So we do. We we our team is is not just monitoring the upfront when we have to do the required appropriateness test, for example, but after the event, you know, what are their patterns of of investing? You know, when their emails come, are they, you know, do they are they understanding it correctly? And we we find that um, we 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 have found over the period of time that the people involved in p2p are actually more sophisticated than most people would imagine um and the appropriateness test has actually made that process a bit better because it does 
weed out those, if I can use that, probably a terrible word to use, but if we can take those people out of the process, then that works for us. But I think, I think if you, I think people would be surprised at how sophisticated the average P2P investor is. Um, it may, it may be different on other platforms that have a different business model where you're putting in a certain amount of money and that money is invested on your behalf. Um, that may be a different scenario, but where you're picking your own loans as you do on Able Rate, doing your own due diligence, reading the documents, reading the proposals, that sort of stuff, then then we think that they're probably more sophisticated than most people would imagine. Okay, that is a nice statement um, that you say that peer-to-peer -peer investors are more sophisticated than, than others. Uh, well, does, would, you, would you agree with that? I wouldn't say it's better than anyone else. I just think that that you know you you start you you see things in the press when people talk about the herd and the crowd um, and and use sort of disparaging you know the crowd invested in this loan and it turned out to be bad or the the crowd the herd got involved in this particular bond and it didn't work out and it's it's it is a it is a problem the the problem with regulation is that it is in essence is trying to protect the most vulnerable which is exactly what it should do but the most vun but that that level that basic baseline of where the most vulnerable are seems to move up over a period of time until you end till you end up excluding uh the normal average investor because the product is deemed to be too complex and therefore can only be sophisticated investors or high net worth investors and i think when you end up doing that that is an issue take the old i don't know whether the rules are the same in hedge funds in the states but there was a minimum that you had to have a million dollars to invest in a hedge fund well what if you won the lottery does that make you sophisticated enough to invest in a hedge fund um you know th there are the the steps to, to, that, that we, we have to be very careful that that we are we're going that, that the regulation doesn't um push us all in a direction where the only thing we can go to is institutional business because then p2p is just a fund right it's just a bunch of originators with a fund on the back end of it and there's plenty of those around i, I think p2p at its core should be access for regular investors to make better returns than they do from the traditional legacy system that has been built up over the last hundred years. Mm. Yeah, true. Hey, Valdas, you, you wanted to say also something? Or? I, I, I am a very big fan of uh, P2P, classic P2P uh, platforms idea, which says that human uh, lends to human. And uh, I like the idea that everybody can become uh, the investor uh, into P2P loans. Uh, and uh, of course, I agree that these uh, smaller investors, they have more questions. So uh, our, let, let's say, our, our um, costs to support, to, to help, uh, to answer the question to, questions to these people are uh, higher comparing to the uh, larger investors. Uh, but I like the idea that everybody can become the investor and get the knowledge going through the process of investing and researching how does it work, how the loans defaults, how they later to be collected, or you can sell it, or you can use some provision funds. I like the idea that people uh, get more knowledge and become more educated uh, uh, talking about financial literacy. So um, our idea is uh, to make the platform accessible to all uh, type of investors because we understand that uh, um, the beginner can become a huge, uh, large investor in the future. And we even allow uh, at our platform to invest to the child. So every child can open the account at the Neo Finance and start investing. And I, I have heard very interesting stories when the child's uh, 14 years 
how they save the money, how they earn the money they tell to the, their friends or families, and how they are happy to earn extra money, which, for example, they saved as a gift from grandma or, 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 or some uh, other um, uh, uh, people. So um, my idea that uh, every small investor can become large in the future and in our case, we allow to invest starting from 10 euros in uh, primary market. And uh, of course, in secondary market, you can have uh, one cent and to try to search <laughs> the investment to buy for one cent. Yeah, and I, think, I think it's the response. I think it's our responsibility as, as developers of this particular industry to build the tools to help people do that. I mean, we all know where the future is, machine learning, AI, we all know that's where we're going, ultimately. And anybody who doesn't think we're going there is completely wrong. But but we're going there. So so if we can build tools along the way that help people with risk, risk management and educate them while they are investing, uh, then I think we're, we're essentially doing the regulator's job for them. Because we know what the regulators want us to do. They want to be able to, they want vulnerable investors to be out of the picture, which I think we can all agree is what we also want. But I think they also want to have people educated. And if we can do that by building the correct tools across our platforms, then then it can only be good for everybody. Because ultimately, you know, if you are talking about institutions, you're talking about a pension fund, you're talking about individual investors anyway. It's just a, it's just a few people who are managing thousands and thousands of people's money, right? And taking a cut for doing it. So, you know, when we talk about institutions, we often forget that those institutions are managing our money anyway. And uh, and so, so you know, there, there, there should be better access. But, of course, there needs to be protections in anything. And then I think it's our responsibility to build the tools to do that. Very good comment. So um, let's go to the last questions because the time is running out. Um, we have one question. Most investors can choose which countries they focus on their peer-to-peer -peer loans. Are there particular markets that look stronger than others at this point for you? So like the Baltics, Ukraine, Russia, and so on. Uh, for us, you know, this is a new thing for us because, I mean, obviously we keep an eye on what's going on in, in continental Europe, but of course, by nature, we are focused in the UK. But it's been very interesting to see what, what is very interesting to listen to some of the uh, um, some of the contributors today, um, uh, and certainly we're going to be reaching out to some because certainly there are because some of the businesses out there because they've had less probably less stringent regulation than we have right at the very beginning have had an opportunity perhaps a little bit longer opportunity to to work on their business models before they got to any sort of regulation, which has been a really interesting path. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, in Lithuania, there there is regulations like they are here, I and mean, what the presentation was a similar sort of things that happen out happen in the UK. But it's but it's very interesting that that those sort of areas, their peer-to-peer -peer networks, have grown up on the basis of their local economies. And I think if uh, we, we we're certainly interested in collaboration to 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 learn more about those those areas and see if there's anything that we can we can work with together. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah just, maybe you have some some insight from from Central Europe, so maybe you can uh, say something to the strength of some markets. Uh, yes, uh, 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 the, the last uh, couple of years, of course, uh, we 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 have a plans to expand to some another country and to work like a classical P two P platform as we do in Lithuania. So we are looking at different markets and more I look at these uh, different European markets, more I understand that Lithuanian market, market is the uh, best in, in the Europe uh, to do that kind of business because of regulation, uh, because uh, the uh, rules are very clear how to act, how the investors are protected, how borrowers are protected. Also, um, it's uh, yeah, it's very important uh, uh, that uh, uh, these, um, let's say, uh, debt collection process are very smooth in our country. 
uh, electronic um, uh, these um, uh, court system is everything is in uh, electronic way you can uh, also talking about the reg registers of the data we need to extract to assess the risk is everything online uh, you can get all the data from the uh, governmental registers online uh, so it's quite easy uh, do the business comparing to some other countries and also it's very important that we have by a law interest uh, cap 75 percent annually and if to compare to other markets for example finland at the moment have 10 netherlands uh, have 12 so uh, actually, if you want to enter the market, uh, you, you, you need to be very well established and to have very uh, huge uh, supply of cheap uh, money of uh, investors. Uh, so in such a country uh, where the cap of interest is high, of course, it's maybe easier to get into the market and to uh, start servicing uh, not prime customers, customers at once but uh, serve uh, subprime customers at once and actually i i do not see very very good market for us to enter in europe and uh, maybe the asian market is more attractive uh, to look at the moment uh, for the consumer loans yeah, thank you for that uh, comment. Really, really cool. So we have um, two questions left. Um, in what ways do you collaborate with other platforms, or are you connected under each other? Um, so we see some platforms in the Baltics. They are going together in, in new markets in, in Asia, for example, Twino and and Wire Invest. Do you also co collaborate with other platforms or not? Uh, well, this is this is essentially what we're aiming to do. Um, it was great that, that we're talking about Singapore, uh, about Asia here. We we when we were looking to build ASMX, we went to the Singapore FinTech Festival Festival a couple of years ago, and that is a gateway to to a lot of Asian funds and family offices, and that obviously we could bring to European platforms when we're all connected up, as we hope we will be. Um, but I think that 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 is that, that if there's one thing I think um is is needed more is is collaboration i think we tend to when we're building the business we tend to think that our database is our database and you know our tech is our tech and and and, 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 and you know and that our origination base is our origination base but we're a lot more connected than we really think we are i think i think all my investors will probably be on other people's platforms and their investors will be on my platform so uh, so we're already collaborating. It's just a case of, of us putting our heads together and saying, how can we do this for the benefit of all of us and our lenders? And, and um, uh, I, I, I mean, we, for example, we provide technology to a platform here in the UK um, and uh, they'll be the first platform connected to ASMX, obviously, because it's the, using the same tech. Um, but I think you'll see over the coming months that there'll be a lot more collaboration through that particular technology that we're developing. Or that we have developed and launched. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, maybe we should do more uh, online conferences to connect you and each other. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Great opportunity. So another question, um, question for everyone: What do you think about uh, implementing cryptocurrencies into the peer-to-peer -peer field? To using blockchain benefit your company, and if yes, how? I think David. You mentioned already you are using the blockchain. Oh, yeah, our, our the, the platform is actually a blockchain based platform. It is, uh, it's been developed by our technology partners who have developed their own blockchain. These are the guys that built a lot of what's uh, on the London Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, the IG platforms, and, and various different uh, exchange technology they've built. And they developed their own specific blockchain because the problem with blockchain is the settlement time. You know, you, you, if you are looking at if we were all together as a platform and there are now 50 platforms doing, you know, a uh, thousand, two thousand trades per day, um, traditional blockchains are going to be a bit too slow. As, you know, even three or four seconds that some of the fastest blockchains, whereas the one that we've been working with will 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 transaction two tenths of a second. And it's specifically been developed for 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 um for the financial industry, I think as far as cryptocurrency is concerned, as far as I'm, a, as much as I'm a fan of crypto, 
I think that um, right at the moment, it is too complex for your average person to contemplate. Um, you know, we, we use blockchain, but we use blockchain for a specific reason. It's for transactional purposes, for regulatory purposes, for speed and for inter interoperability. Um, the fractionalization element later down the line, such as the fractionalization of property or the fractionalization of art or whatever, could be traded over our platform today quite easily without using any sort of crypto. Underneath, of course, there is digital uh, a digital movement, but uh, but at the end of the day, you don't specifically need a cryptocurrency to do it. And I think if you are in a position where you have to have some sort of hardware on your, I mean, uh, listen, I run a tech platform, and I'm terrified of keeping my Bitcoin on a live ledger, or you know, I was I was searching how long does the hardware last, you know, um, you know, and then you've got to have a twenty phrase password to. To do it and i know those guys who are into it and those guys that understand it uh, fully and trade it every day they are you know it is a it is a fantastic movement but i think for the average person right now they just want to send you their sterling euros dollars or whatever it is and get back their sterling euro dollars and if we have to use tokenization digital currencies uh behind the scenes um, it's much like switching on a light switch. No one, no one wants the theory of electricity. They just want light. And I think if we are able to to produce that while still using what is an amazing technology, um, then I think that, that I think that'll be the first the first step because there are certainly going to be people working on on how do we make this more user friendly. Um, so I think those platforms that are doing crypto lending and all that sort of stuff that that is mainly for those people that are involved in the crypto space. Um, but there's, there is definitely, um, you know, a market for blockchain with smart contracts and 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 certainly what we've done with the secondary market as far as transactional blocks are concerned from a regulatory point of view and reducing the settlement cost. And essentially, that's what we've done is allowed one pound to be traded as efficiently as 100,000 pounds, which you could not do on any particular traditional market right now, certainly in, in uh, something like private debt. So, so I think, yeah. I mean, I the I think there is there is certainly a market for for the blockchain element. Whether the cryptocurrency side of it is going to be integrated into many platforms anytime soon, uh, I'm not so sure until until there is a more user friendly way of, of of operating. Yeah, thank you. I think about us, you are using the AI, but not the blockchain, right? Uh, yeah. Um... Actually, uh, yeah, to use blockchain, uh, it should be some some demand. Uh, why? why do we need to implement uh, blockchain solutions? At the moment, we do not see uh, the clear demand uh, why we need that. But maybe the secondary market uh, idea is uh, quite good. Uh, uh, so, uh, but uh, we do not use it at the moment. Um, and um, you know, we are electronic money institution, and uh, by our regulation, we cannot uh, have uh, no transactions uh, with cryptocurrencies. Uh, so, and also, I am very big fan of P two P market lending. Uh, but I'm not a very big uh, market of um, cryptocurrencies, but uh, it will be something interesting uh, happening in the future. As you all know, that some countries already announced that uh, they want to have a digital currency. For example, a few days ago, Sweden announced that uh, they have a plan to uh, to, to have digital krona. Um, maybe we'll see more talks regarding digital euro soon. So uh, the situation could be very, um, let's say, vulnerable. And um, uh, maybe we, uh, at the moment, could uh, stay a little bit away and uh, look what is uh, uh, happening in next in, in, in that uh, world. Thank you, guys.